Hello good people and welcome back to the Red Table. Today I'm going to introduce you to watercolor paint. What is watercolor? Well, it's tiny colored pigment particles with gum arabic to help them stick to the paper. At our school, we make our own paint in order to save money and to give you higher quality materials. In my recipe, I add honey so that it activates as soon as you add water. I also add glycerin so it doesn't leave a crusty edge. Any non-professional grade paint also adds chalky fillers to dilute the pigment and make it cheaper. We don't do that, so you get a high-end, professional quality paint at a school price. How is watercolor different from other paint? Well, in the past, you may have used temper pucks. This kind of paint is made to be so cheap that teachers can hand them out like candy and not worried about the paint getting destroyed. The paint is full of filler, so it does not mess up people's clothes as much if it splashes. But it also means that the color is dull. I have a few students who love working with temper pucks, and most of them hate it though. The main reason is that it takes forever to grind away at the pucks with your brushes to activate the paint. That's because they use wallpaper paste instead of gum arabic and no honey. Acrylic paint is very popular. Instead of using gum arabic to stick the pigment to the paper, it uses liquid acrylic. It dries to a clear plastic film. It's much more expensive than tempera, and it tends to create densely colored opaque paint. You can often paint over mistakes you've made with a new layer of acrylic. In contrast, both watercolor and tempera tend to be transparent and it's harder to cover up mistakes. Acrylic paint does not easily come out of clothing and it destroys brushes if they're not cleaned properly. So at Citadel High we tend to stick to watercolor in Visual Arts 10. Another beautiful option is to paint in oil. Personally this is my favorite paint because of how many kinds of techniques are available and how rich the color can be. However, we can't use it in schools easily because of the fumes connected with using it. In fact, I've personally become allergic to oil paint because of not using it safely in the past. First, let's take a moment to talk about health and safety. We supply you with paint made from scratch using raw materials. I've looked up the safety data sheets for all the ingredients we use and they're all considered food safe. One of the pigments is called thalocyanine blue, but it does not contain cyanide. Instead, the word thalocyanine comes from the Greek words for deep, thalo, and blue, cyan. However, you still don't want to eat it. The pigment is really powerful, and you do not want your teeth to be stained. And let's face it, people are going to judge you if you eat it. It also stains your hands, so don't put it on your skin either. And remember, your clothes aren't cheap, so you should protect them before you start. I like to wear an apron or an old shirt before I start painting. If you do get paint on your clothes, wash it out with soap and water at the sink. Then take it home and use a stain remover and concentrated detergent before washing it. It won't get all the color out, but it will get most of it. We make our own paint for you to guarantee that it will be high quality. If you're working from home, there are other good brands and paint kits out there. I personally love the Koi watercolor travel set. Windsor & Newton also makes a bunch of good beginner sets at okay prices, both in rectangular containers called pans and in tubes. I would avoid most of the watercolor sets that you get from the dollar store though. I personally find them really frustrating. What kind of brushes should you use? In the kits we give you, you'll find soft brushes of various sizes. Some will be small for detail and others will be large for putting paint down in large areas. If you have acrylic brushes, they are just fine. They just hold a little less paint. I tend to purchase brushes that are meant for both watercolor and acrylic. Don't use oil brushes though. They are terrible. And avoid the cheapest brushes at the dollar store. In order to make your paint work, you need to add clean water. You're also going to need to clean your brushes while you work. If you mix dirty brush water to your paint, it's going to contaminate your colors and make them brutal to mix. That's why I usually use two water containers. I use one just for cleaning most of the paint off my brushes, and the other one to rinse the brushes off and add water to paint. Hot water cleans your brushes faster. If your water gets dirty, dump it and get new water. Get it for a friend while you're there. And if you're at home, try not to use your favorite mug. Some people have been known to accidentally drink their paint water thinking it's a cup of tea. Okay, I admit it, I am some people. We all make embarrassing mistakes. What kind of paper works best? When you're practicing, any white photocopy or drawing paper will do. It does tend to wrinkle and get waterlogged though. For your good copy paintings, you want to use a thick paper to resist wrinkling and to help the paint dry evenly. If you like, you can tape your painter onto a board or even onto an old thick book that you no longer use. 
This helps reduce the amount of wrinkling and curling that happens. If you don't have a board, you can always tape down the corners of your artwork later when it starts to curl. Here's how to use your palette. The first thing that you do when you get ready is add water to the paint in your palette. Your goal is to keep your colors pure and to make sure that they don't become contaminated. That means that you must always mix your paints in the mixing wells in the middle of the palette. You bring the pure paint over to the wells and then you mix them together. Otherwise, you're gonna contaminate your paint. And this is gonna leave you with muddy colors that you just can't mix to get the colors you want. If you mess up, you can clean your palette, but it is a bit of a hassle. Get some paper towel or tissue and wet it down. Wipe the wells until they're clean. Whatever you do, don't try to clean your palette in a sink. The colors are very pure and they will splash onto your clothes. I try this once a year thinking that I just have to be more careful and I always regret it. At the end of the year, we put our palettes through the dishwasher to clean them and get them ready to be refilled. Here's how to clean up so that your artwork, materials, and clothes don't get ruined. Rinse your brushes in clean water to clean them and put them back in your kit. Dump your water containers in the sink and stack them to the side. Don't clean your palette. It wastes paint and you can reuse the colors you mix tomorrow by just adding water. Your cubbies are designed to hold all your supplies and your palettes will dry out safely inside them. If people get paint on their clothes, it's usually during cleanup. So don't take off your apron until everything is put away. Put your painting papers on top of your palette and store them in your cubby. As long as your paper is on top, it will be safe. If you taped your artwork to a board, put the whole board in your cubby. Now you can take your apron off, but watch out for other people with palettes.